and welcome to Video Video Interviews. My name is Zach Hutchinson, and today we are with Shayla Miller, who is a video artist, a photographer, a... I don't know, what else do you do? Um, I do video installation sometimes, mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing lately. Um, I sometimes draw. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes sing. Mm -hmm. And I write a lot. My perception of you is that photography has been a heavy part of your work. Yeah. Um, but maybe more recently you've been doing more durational and video yeah. work, right? Yeah. When I first started out, um, like when I first got serious about becoming an artist when I was like in eighth or ninth grade, I only wanted to be a photographer. And first it was a fashion photographer and then that kind of transitioned into a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I started art school, I was introduced to like making conceptual photography, so yeah. then it completely shifted to that. Um, but yeah, I think like I photography has always been a huge part of my work. It's always been photo heavy, but at the back of my mind, I really wanted to make films. It's something that is very different than traditional like, and I'm assuming narrative filmmaking. Right. Narrative, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is video installation. I think it's about um, like it, the ability that it has to uh, start a conversation with the audience. And I think you can kind of say that about almost any sort of art, like yeah. a painting or a photograph, whatever. But I think like the gesture of making a video installation, like you are definitely saying, oh, I'm trying to do this for somebody, like an audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like you're trying to build this relationship between the piece and whoever is looking at it. Yeah. Um, and, and I just really like that. I like um, that level of engagement or like forcing this, this type of engagement. You're not only like making them watch the duration of the piece, but yeah. they also have this sort of body that's in the work. Yeah, that's also something that I love about it. Like. Um, as a viewer, you have to, you're thinking about the piece and then also about yourself, like, oh, am I in the right position? Like, oh, should I get over here? And let's talk about that piece. The seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed. Zing, 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 zing. So the yeah. seed, um, there's a lot of interesting things about it. It's, mm -hmm. you were looking down at this thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, like, lack space. Yeah. And there's many definitions of what we're talking about when we're saying black space yeah um, which is something else I want you to talk about and yeah. then um, the, the the different metaphors along with that too is that it's the seed is singing to us more or mm -hmm. less too. What, just expand on that yeah I watched this documentary over the summer or during the summer um, about backup singers called 20 feet from stardom <laughs> it's a great film um, <laughs> And there was this guy in it, I think he was maybe like a music producer or composer or something like that. And he said that um, the voice singing is like the purest form of expression. Mm -hmm. And like ever since I heard that, I like, I think in that moment I subconsciously decided that I'm going to make work that has some sort of musicality to it. Um, and with the, the seed installation, um, I was also thinking about like the idea of black space um, I read this poem, and I've been studying um, the Black Arts Movement for the past couple of months. Because um, <laughs> I'm a scholar. <laughs> um, and there was this poem that I read or with a group of other people in a classroom. Let's just say that it was in a classroom. <laughs> um, and it was called SOS, and it was by Mary Baraka. And um, he was one of the co-founders, uh, or one of the founders of the Black Arts Movement. Yeah. And in the poem, it's very short, um, but it was basically like this calling to all black people to like come in, like come into this space. And it had this like sense of urgency to it, um, which I really liked. But I was really interested in the idea of, that he presented in that poem of like black space. And so with the seed video, or the seed installation, um, I kind of wanted to take that idea, but instead of just thinking about black space, I was thinking about black water. Yeah. Because like when you think about blackness and like separate from 
black people, black culture, but like just black. Yeah. Like the popular idea is like, you know, dirty, dark evil. side, evil. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was interested in having like this black water be the cleanest, like the purest. Mm. And then going back to that idea of the voice being the purest form of expression, um, I wanted to add those things, like to have the, the voice to sort of um, validate the, the pure black water. Um, and, and the seed itself. And the seed too. And I also really, I like really like this idea of like the seed being like this, this super strong being and like um, it has this song that it sings in order to grow like to to come up from all of this um, thing like all the soil that it's buried in in order to flourish and yeah I I just really enjoy the idea of like the reason why it grows because it it sings the song so another reason why I love singing and praising I think it's one because it's a part of my culture and like that was something that I was um constantly around because my mom is like a bible thumper so we went to church (laughs) every week went to church camp um Mm. and we went to one of those churches where like the first probably like hour of church is just the choir um singing and although i wasn't a huge fan of church service but the singing the choir was my favorite part of it yeah um and i think um you know with black culture there are so many different avenues um and i think not a lot of people realize that you know that there are yeah and, like you can be a black person and not necessarily identify or know anything about one part of black culture just because you were raised in a different area like you were raised in detroit instead of um, like in virginia or something yeah. like that and that's totally cool but i think um praising and, and worshiping or singing anything like that i think almost all black people have some sort of connection to that. Yeah. And I think it is because it was like the first form of expression for our people. So you gave me like four or five videos yeah. that you were like, these also can function as my artist statement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those again are, are all people of color singing. There's like a very short clip of this choir singing the Good Times um, theme song. Really beautifully. It's so so good. (laughs) Oh my god. And then there's a clip from Sister Act 2 when Whoopi Goldberg is teaching the class about if you want to be somebody, you want to go somewhere. Better wake up and pay attention. (laughs) And then they wanted to like spice it up. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then there's another one with. Um, like a group of girls, I think in the 50s or 60s, I can't, I don't remember which year, but they're uh, playing Pizza Pizza daddy which is like a little singing chant game, like in the schoolyard. Yeah. Um, and then the last one was Anthony Hamilton, his backup singers, the Hamiltons. They were singing this song that they just made up on the spot called Somebody Roll the Lead. <laughs> so that was all improv in that clip too? I think so, yeah. yeah. It, it seemed like it was. Because um, I like looked it up to see if like they had recorded it somewhere yeah, else, and they were just like, to let's, you know what, let's sing somebody wrote a week right now. <laughs> but no, I think they made it up just in the spot, and I was like, yes, it's amazing. So it's everything I love. <laughs> but yeah, I think with all those videos, um, uh, they all have this level of like call and response, which is like a big part of um, like the way that black people, like there's a huge history of that sort of communication within black yeah. culture, specifically in music. The hand games yes. is super important in uh, most of your installation work. Like when I used to sing that, sing those sort of songs when I was younger, um, and then I just, I really like the idea of how, uh, like the idea of taking a song like that, or taking that sort of trope and like speaking about um, like something serious, I guess, or like yeah. having some, some hidden truth within just very simple words, just like Miss Mary Mac, 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 but it's actually like about something else, yeah. more than Miss Mary Mac. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to, 
I redid that video multiple times and rewrote that song multiple times. Um, but I knew that I wanted to write a hand clapping, hand clapping chant that was telling the story of a girl who like, realizes that she's queer and um, just sort of battling with that realization and, and like thinking about what her parents are going to do and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but still letting it be playful. Um, so I first when I was making that piece, it was just that that I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. And then I, as I was rewriting and rewriting, I was like, why, like, why am I so attached to, you know, making it a hand clapping chant? And then it was because I realized that um, it was, I had this connection with my mother because she played the same games. Like she say, played some of the same songs, like the Miss Mary Mac, like she knows that. And yeah. she's 66, so I just thought it was amazing that we had this bond, like this sort of playground bond, um, and like this this uh, other language that we both knew we both yeah. speak. Yeah, well I think that's really important is this accessibility, and that is something that I think is super important for all the work that's queer or feminist is that yeah. there's different levels of access into the work mm -hmm. that like an academic can appreciate or our mom our moms can appreciate right exactly and I think that's what sh work should be like thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, and that so that's not just in that piece but it's also in a lot of your photography like yeah. your mango Uh, you're showing your body mm -hmm. um, all like curled up mm -hmm. next to a mango. Yeah. And that's how like the work is installed as well. Because mm -hmm. it's different images. Mm -hmm. And um, that, like I was saying, it's just got this really great accessible moment. And then you do that in some of your other work. So talk about that piece and where that came from. So that came from uh, me just witnessing all of my guy friends who are black. Um, this was like right around Tamir Rice, Mike Brown, um, last year. And those issues are still echoing today, but this yeah. is when, like, it was really in the heat of it. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, all, I believe all black people were really just going through it but it, I just remember like looking at all of my black guy friends and they were just all like so torn to pieces I mean obviously it, you know it was definitely understandable yeah and so I was just thinking about like what is it like to grow up and to see these boys or these men who look like you have the same skin as you and they're just being murdered for no reason and what does that have What's, what does, does that play onto the psyche, or like how does that affect the psyche, um, yeah. the, like the black boy's psyche? And for me, I thought it was just like, well, these boys are just born into the blueness because you know this is the only sort of, not the only narrative, but it's just something that you're constantly surrounded by. Yeah. Unfortunately, and I know like this, it's not just black boys that are that are dying. You know, it's black women, it's trans people. Um, but in that moment, that's that's just what I was thinking about. I think that it's a really powerful way that you're like putting these things next to each other, and you do so. You do that in a lot of your photography work. Oh, like uh, the last I think it's the last thing you uploaded on your Tumblr, <laughs> which is like a picture of you and like oh, hey. fur <laughs> <laughs> in a fur, and it's yeah. like I don't remember what it says, but it's like kind of bitchy in like a really good way. <laughs> <laughs> picture of a black girl. Uh, breaking the rule of thirds. Yeah. Picture of a black girl taking up space. Picture of a black girl doing what she got to do. Yeah. To take up space. To take up space, yeah. which is so important. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being a video video. Thanks for having me. Yeah.